Hello, my name's Mark from G-Code Tutor, and today we're going to take a look at safety lines. So what do we use safety lines for? Well, what we do is at the beginning of each section of program, we add a line in to put the machine into a default state. So this means if we stop the program halfway through and we jump back in and rerun a different tool, we know for sure that the machine is gonna be in a safe state to run. So here's an example program and here is the safety lines that's inside this program. Now it must be noted that safety lines are different depending on your needs. So we may see some different things inside our safety line and it would be different on each machine depending on the program we are running. So let's take a look at some of the information that we might see in a safety line. So this is a typical safety line that I've pulled from a CNC lathe program but we also use them on milling machines and routers also. So let's have a look at what I've added to this line. Now, as I was saying, we may see this different on each machine. It depends on our needs, our program, and also the machine. So I've started off this line with a G90. So this puts the machine into the absolute positioning system. So if we had a section of program that we were using incremental, we may wish to switch back to absolute to make sure the machine's always in the same state each time. Now, if our program was entirely programmed in incremental, we would use G91 here. Now, it doesn't matter which order that we add these G codes in, as the machine reads this as one entire line and not word by word. So it doesn't matter which order we put these in. So the next one up here, I've added G54. So G54 is our work shift datum, it's our standard datum. So if we're working on a different datum, we would add G55, G56, whichever datum that we were using. But I'm assuming here that we're just working with the one datum, the one work shift. So I'm calling that in the safety line. So each time we rerun each block of code, it rereads where our datum is. Now this G91.1 I have here. Now this is applicable on some machines, but not all machines. So what this is, is when we're calculating our radiuses, this tells the machine that we're using an incremental distance from the center point of our radius to the point of our cutter that we are cutting with. And we can also use absolute distance modes for this as well. So when we're programming with I, J and K, some machines require us to add this in, some do not. I think most machines tend to use G91.1 as standard, but every machine is different, so I can't say for sure that your machine will default to G91.1 incremental. So this tells the machine that the dimensions to the center point of our radius either comes from our datum position or from the last known position of the cutter. Now it's also important to clear any cutter compensation that we may have active. Because if we stop a machine halfway through a roughing cycle, for example, where we were using cutter compensation, and then we stop the program halfway through and we call upon a different part to say a drilling cycle, then it would try to add that cutter compensation to the drilling cycles. So it's always better and safer if we cancel any cutter compensation at the beginning of each section of code. Then after this, we can add any cutter comp that we may require. Now where this is a safety line for a lathe, I've also added G17 here, and this is our X and Y plane selection. So when we're cutting on a lathe using G17, that's our standard turn-in plane. But if we were using live tooling, we may be using G18 or G19 to cut radiuses along a different axis. So where this is a safety line from a lathe program, I've also added G17 to make sure that we're on the correct plane. Now again, a lot of lathes do default back to G17, but if our program does use different planes, it's always good to default back to the standard in our safety line. Now I've added G21 here. Now G21 selects between our metric or imperial units. So if our program is in metric, I would add G21 here, or if it was imperial, I would add G20. Now it's very rare that we would switch between imperial or metric with throughout the program as we're running it. But I always like to add this here anyway. It's important to have at the beginning of the program, but there's no harm to remind the machine that we're in metric units 
every time it reads a new sequence. And finally, another very important one that we would find in most safety lines, and that's the G80. So G80 cancels any active cycles. So say for example, we had a roughing cycle active and we were stopped the machine halfway through that roughing cycle and we started doing a drilling cycle. We need to cancel that active cycle. If we didn't read through the part of the program to where that cycle is canceled by using the G80, we may have some problems with our program. It may lose itself. So it's nice to cancel any active cycles at the start of each section of code just to make sure nothing is active inside the machine. So that's just one example of a safety line that we may see on a CNC lathe program. Now, of course, it may be different on the milling machine or router, depending on what we are programming. But the point is, the safety line is a very important feature to have at the start of each sequence of our program. So then we can stop the program wherever we'd like and change the position of the program and run from a different sequence and not have to worry that something still may be active in the machine that could cause our programs to go wrong. So I cover the topic on safety lines on a few of my courses over on the website. So if you want to know more, pop over to gcodetutor.com and I have some more information over there about programming with safety lines.